All right, so we're going to walk through some of the Romy stuff now that some of our um, some of you all have the Romy's in hand um, and the kits that we have for them. So just to go over it again, what we went over some of last week, but you have the Romy fully constructed with motors, encoders, the control board, and the Raspberry Pi board. So the green board on top is your Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then in your kits, um, you all have rechargeable batteries and the charger for them. So before each time you go and use it or whenever you're done with it, take the batteries out. The Romy does, after a little while of driving, it eats through the batteries, not too quickly, like they're pretty good, but it's definitely, um, it'll go through them relatively fast. So putting them back on the charger is useful. Um, you can just plug it into any USB cable or your phone charger or whatever. Um, it just takes a USB micro and that you have the cable for it with it. Um, the Wi-Fi adapter that's included in it makes it easier to actually connect to the Romy, which we'll do um, in a second. We'll walk through that. And then um, the SD card has the Romy image already on it. We did them all this weekend, so they should be ready to go. But then eventually when they release a update for the Romy's, we'll need to use the micro SD card reader to plug this into your computer and load the new image onto it once they eventually make an update, which I assume will be, I don't know, sometime in the next couple months, there's probably be an update that gets, that gets sent out. Um, okay, so if you haven't already, let's go ahead and put the batteries in the Romy, which is shown down here in the documentation, we open up the bottom and put the batteries in. I have the camera thing. So yeah, so we can just pop these little tabs, pull it off, and the six batteries go in just like that. Um, and then once they're in, to turn the Romy on, well, first off, before you do that, take the micro SD card out of the little kit and slide it into your Raspberry Pi. Um, it should only go in one way. Um, the little gold contacts should be facing down towards the board. Um, one. Just unmute and ask questions at the time. Um, yeah, everybody can ask questions. Okay, so once the SD cards in and the batteries are on, uh, or batteries are plugged in, we can't go ahead and turn it on. So the on switch is down here and we slide it over to the on position. To turn it off, you have to slide the switch back to the off position and push the power button. Um, so it's a two-step off process, but on is only sliding the switch. Um, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit. A bunch of lights have to flash. I haven't figured out exactly when it knows how, when it connected. Um, eventually it'll get the Wi-Fi running on the Raspberry Pi, so we'll be able to connect to it, um, hopefully here in a second. Um, but yeah, all of the lights start flashing. There's a little red and green light. There's a blue light on the main board. Um, at some point, I assume the light patterns, eventually we'll learn what they mean exactly to how they connect to the different Wi-Fi's, but I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and if you plug the little USB Wi-Fi adapter into your computer, you should be able to have a second Wi-Fi. Um, we may need to figure out if, depending on what, if your computer has any security stuff or anything, but it should work on Mac or Windows. Um, and it should basically let you have um, a second Wi-Fi connection compared to just the normal um, the normal one. So like on my computer, it comes up as Wi-Fi 2. So if I click on the, the little Wi-Fi button in the taskbar, um, I can switch between Wi-Fi 1 and Wi-Fi 2. And then on Wi-Fi 2, um, I have a little, one of the networks is called WPI lib pi hyphen something, like a bunch of string of characters and numbers. Um, and that's the one we want to connect to. So once we can connect to, once we can see the Wi-Fi, we're going to connect to it, and we're going to connect to it using um, this password, WPI lib 2021 exclamation point. Um, once we're able to do that, we should be able to just open um, any browser and go over to 10.0.0.2, and that should load our WPI Lib um, like writable page right here. Back up. Okay, so we're going to um, install the firmware on the Romy now. 
So we need the USB cable that came with the Romy. We're going to plug the micro USB port into the Romy's control board down here. And we're going to plug the USB port into the Raspberry Pi on the other end. So we're basically just connecting this whole thing to itself. That's fine. Um, the um, the website says it might reset. I haven't seen that on the one I have, but if other people do, it may be something that we can um, figure out. We have to do it when it's turned off and then to return anything back on. Once it's all connected, it should this button should be clickable now, and we can click update firmware. Uh, make sure we don't turn it off or anything while it's doing that. And then it gives you like a little beep once it's finished. Um, and you should get this done thank you message at the bottom of this window when it's actually completely done. Okay, after we have the firmware installed, we need to update the Romy web service. So to do that, we go through this um, GitHub page. It's also linked in the documentation as well um, for the Romy. Um, I feel like I got off where I need to be. Um, yeah, so you can get there through one of the updates. Yeah, the GitHub releases page for it has the link here. Um, and then we're going to download this Romy service um, 1.13 package. And then when we're back here and we're connected to the Romy, we're just going to in this little spot right here where it says web service update, we're gonna choose file, we're gonna choose the Romy web service 1.13, we're gonna to swap to writable up at the top, and that's gonna make this to where we can actually click on it, and we're gonna click save. And it's gonna write the new web service. All right, so once we have the Romy software set up where we want it, and we have this nice status, the version's at 1.1.3 and our firmware is compatible. We can then open Visual Studio and we can make a new project for the Romy if we want. So we can create a new project. Um, some of you may have done this already. We were looking at it a little bit earlier, um, but if not, we can do it here. We can go to example, Java, and we scroll all the way down, and the very bottom one is Romy reference. Um, we can select a new project folder. I normally put ours in my GitHub folder. Um, but you can put it in your, wherever it's convenient for you to put it, your documents folder, desktop, make a folder for robots, um, as long as you just know where it is. Um, I normally keep it in C GitHub because that's where any of the stuff that will sync back and forth with the team ends up or any of my other GitHub repos. So I just know where they all are. Um, and then we can make this um, whatever you want to name your Romy project for testing right now. Um, Romy, Alan, Romy, your name, something like that. Um, and then leave the create a new folder checked as that lets you to create all the projects in the folder and not wherever you're just putting it. Um, and then enter your team number, 3847. And we can go ahead and generate project once all of this is filled out that same way. It should be example Java and then uh, example Java Romy something yeah. Uh, Romy there's no Romy anything. Romy reference. Yeah, that doesn't come up. That doesn't come up. Do you have WPI Lab 2021 or are you in 2020? Um, when you go and like start it on your desktop, does it say WPI Live 2021? Exit 2020. Yeah. Yeah, 2020 does not have Romy support. By the way. All right, so once we have the project um, up, it's basically ready to go to run 
um, at least the basic controls and everything. So we sh can't. We should just be able to hit either F5, um, which is the easiest way, as it launches the, um, it builds it and it opens up the debugger and everything and gets everything connected. It should load this window that looks just like this. Um, and this is kind of our simulation environment. It's called Glass. Um, we need to bring over either a gamepad if you have something plugged in, like a joystick, or you can use the keyboard. So we can drag over the keyboard to a spot like this. Um, it's a little strange. I think I have it. It, it may have it, the keyboard binding may be a little odd for some of them. I don't remember if I changed it. Um, I think I had to change which ones did which or something like that because they were a little bit different, but we have to play with that again. But once we're into teleoperated, we should be able to drive the robot um, at least forward and backwards with W and S and then to um, and then oh, that was weird. and then we need to um, we do need to swap. To access two for DNA, if we want it to work properly, um, and we need to change our decay rate to the same as access one, so 0 0.05 and 0 0.05, and then it should let us actually steer when we do this. Let's forward. Okay, and I'll show you what it looks like in video um, over here. So yeah, so when I press W. Oh, wait, no, I have to, you have to have the window um, as the main window. You have to be, you have to be like focused on it on your computer. And then when I press W, the wheels will go forward. When I press S, the wheels go backwards. Um, A, they turn, uh, yeah, it turns left. And then D, it turns right. Maybe it turns right. Oh, I think my batteries on my Romy have died. <laughs> yeah, the batteries on my Romy have died. So I'm glad we are ending the session, and that's kind of what happens. It makes a loud buzzing sound when the batteries die. Um, okay, so once we're through that project, I'm going to turn off my Romy so it stops beeping at me. Um, the So a couple things we can go through. So as you're going through, there are some... You can we can play inside of this and start seeing what the code actually does in here. And when you have questions, let me know. Um, it's relatively um, basic code, so a lot of the same stuff we did last semester. If people were around for that, um, we kind of walk through some of this. Um, but it does have a couple of the drivetrain. Um, it has a couple of the subsystems. It has some of the commands. It has some really basic arcade mode stuff. Um, oh, sorry, it has a couple of basic like autonomous things. Um, so like drive distance, turn, drive distance. So if you edit these, you can get it to drive different paths. Um, so you could add more if you wanted to drive for longer or if you wanted to change how it was doing it. Um, and these are just really basic autonomous. So basically straight line or turn and you can't do them together. So you can't drive in any sort of arcs or anything with the way that this code is set up right now. Um, what we eventually want to be working towards is getting um, this link working. So this link links to a Chief Delphi post um, that I actually should link the top post. It's more useful um, where he was able to get the Romy robot to basically do um, paths closer to what like the actual FRC challenges are. So you can see like the Romy is able to like make nice arc turns and kind of follow an actual path. Um, so that's eventually what we want to be able to do. So once we can do it on the Romy, we'll be able to transfer it to our actual FRC robot pretty easily. Um, so he has this Romy characterization template project that exists. He has these two different projects actually in Romy examples that are linked in here. Um, he has a Romy characterization and a Romy trajectory um, ram set, ram seat. I never remember how to pronounce that. Um, and he kind of, it has pretty decent descriptions of how it all works, which is nice. 
Um, I don't know if any, I doubt any of you will get there this week, but if you want to get that far, if you have questions, I can talk about how to download this and we can start playing with it. I haven't even got very far in this. I haven't downloaded, I haven't played with it very much yet. Um, but he does have it, so it, it's all set up to be able to walk through um, that code, which I believe is, oh no, I opened my old one. Okay, so I do have it open so we can see what it looks like. Um, Romy examples. That one. Okay. So yeah, so it's very similar. It still has a robot container and everything, but it just has different, um, it just has some different methods and everything put in and it has some more, um, it has some different commands as well, I believe. Oh, actually, he did it all inside robot container. That's interesting. Okay, so he wrote all the commands in here, which is so they don't have their own files, but they still it still works the same way. We just have to kind of parse how he did it in line. Um, which again, this will definitely will take some time to understand all of this because again, I don't even understand all of it right now. That's not to say that it's necessarily complicated; it's just that I haven't put a bunch of time into it yet. Um, but the example should work basically immediately. So if we were to run this, if my Romy had power, we could see if it doing something similar to what his was able to do. 